Hey, it's Tom here with the Yay Earth Hunt and Health. And a lot of you guys, you see me at E Factor Outdoors too. Me and Brian have been buddies for a long time. We've been hunting for nearly ever. So, so most of you've been asking about like setting up your bow the way I do it, compound instinctive shooting. So I'm going to take a little bit of time in my house and just show you my basic setup. I won't really get into arrow tuning. I'll just cover a little bit about it, but we're just going to, I'll just show you my bow. I got a little bow rack here. I got everybody's bows up there, Vespers and Axles, my wife's. First of all, I have this Switchback. It's a Switchback XT. It's in mint condition. It has a flat back grip on it. I put a brand new 60X bowstring on there and cable. 400 bucks shipped, shipped to your door. If anybody is interested, you can we can go through PayPal or whatever, just let me know. But this bow's on eBay right now. So I don't shoot it. I bought it from my neighbor and he never hunted with it. It came straight from a dealer close to us and he bought it brand new, set, shot it maybe 50 times, it sat in the bow case. So I got it and shot it a few times, but I always fall back to my no cam. Which is what I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to get a little bit closer, because I'm self-filming. First of all, that's my big high capacity quiver. I like a lot of arrows. I don't want to carry five arrows to the woods. Okay. They don't make these anymore. It's a Martin Super Quiver. Maybe if I can figure out how to do it sometime, I will get my own specialty line of high capacity quivers. Since, you know, a lot of people get all butthurt about high capacity magazines and stuff like that. I like a lot of arrows and a lot of bullets. That's just what I do. I carry a steel blunt point, a muzzy judo, and just a quiver full of broadheads and one field point. double knocking point, I double serve over the original serving with crown serving. It's that green stuff, you can find it on eBay or Amazon. It's, it's slick, good release, and I always shoot bare fingers, so it's, I just build it up a little bit so that skinny string ain't digging into my fingers. And there's a trophy taker rest. You see the launcher? I took a little pencil grinder and carved the radius in there to the shape of my arrow so it sits down in there nice. I don't worry about side pressure, none of that. You can tune a bow to anything you want, okay? If you can tell, it might be hard, hard to, but my arrow is pointed towards the riser. It's not set in there dead on center shot, just like they say you should have. We're finger shooting here. This thing is tuned. I'm zero to 80 yards, and I can usually stack them in there if I do what I'm supposed to do but sometimes it don't always work that way. Here's another shot of it. Okay, that's my basic setup. My knock point height is roughly an eighth inch, maybe a quarter above center because it just helps with fletching clearance and it just tunes that way. I shoot a lot of arrows out in the yard to get my bow to shoot to where I want it to. If you were the target about how I anchor and I'm going to shoot a couple arrows back there in the house and I'll just show you. Here's exactly what it looks like. Let me get lined up. I tuck in right on my cheekbone
you got to keep it tucked tight with the string blur right by the arrow and you, and you can almost gap shoot. <clears throat> At longer distance you're going to see your arrow so you're going to be gap shooting. Don't worry about all that bull crap talk on the, these websites about what's instinctive and what's not and that's all a bunch of horse crap. You shoot to be accurate and I like shooting the primitive way and a lot of great archers shoot split vision. That's what I do. I see the arrow in my peripheral but it's just a blur. You reference it so you can be on target and be accurate with what you want to hit. Right now I'm shooting split finger. I have been for the last few maybe five years, I don't know. But it helps me get out there, let's just say 50 yards. At 50 yards, if you guys are strictly gapping, my point on is at 50 yards. So I get back, say, I get back to 70. Heck, I'm way above the target with the point of the arrow. So it's not even, you don't even really use it. I just look, you know how you get that double vision looking straight through something and you can almost see through the center of your shaft and your arrow rest. That's kind of how I see it. Because your bow is up so high, your grip's nearly in the way. It just takes time, it takes practice, and you just let your brain and your muscle memory take over. And in a hunting situation, you're not going to be thinking about all that. All you got to remember is when you draw back, don't see the whole deer. See a spot in the kill zone. And do it just like you practice in the yard. As far as arrow tuning, I'll show you. This arrow is about 31 inches long. It's a gold tip 400, 125 grain field point. I got this bare shaft tuned, showing a little on the weak side. And it's worked for me. I don't have to use any of the gold tip fact weights and that's what I've used the last two years. Three years ago I used, I gave these arrows to my wife. That's my old arrow. You see the, di the difference of length? This arrow was 125 grain point and I put 100 grains of fact weights behind it which I had some heavy FOC and I and it was very accurate I don't have a video to prove it but for instance heavy FOC I shot this bare shaft this short arrow at 50 yards out here and and I hit the bag target it's a hurricane bag target I can't say that I hit the spot I was wanting but at that far no fletchings bare shaft all that point weight carried that exactly to where it needed to go. That's pretty good. But this, I'm not using any weights. Uh, it's just your standard setup. As far as tuning this arrow rest, I like the trophy taker because it's a stainless steel launcher arm. I got. A, I order that uh, string loop material. It don't stretch. And I tie that on there for my for my little pull cord. And you see how I get that on there? I tie the knot, then I fold that string around it, and I put a knocking knock set on there. And then that. That's how I like to do that. It's just bulletproof. You know you know it's not going anywhere. Nothing's gonna break. And as far as tuning this. At, I'll just draw this back. I would say my last three quarters of an inch to an inch of draw, that rest tops out and it puts a little tension there. It stays up just for a split second. I've tried having that thing stay up an inch and a half or two inches, but it just makes for poor flight. And I like using that drop away because it's just, it's perfect every time.
This is bulletproof. I've had good luck with it. I shoot broad, fixed blade broadheads all the time. I've shot uh, muzzy trocars, slick tricks, Magnus stingers, and big Sawicki two blades out of this bow. And they are on the money. You tune your bow, you're gonna have good success. And all right, dudes. This is roughly 10 yards. This is all I got inside the house. Okay, if you see him, I got Axel back here. He's watching his show and eating a little snack. And what I got here, I have two bare shafts. That's electrical tape. I weighed it out on my grain scale it's to get roughly the same amount of weight as you would your blazer veins. Which, if you guys really wanted to know, I'm really old school and I come from, uh, you could say, a traditional shooting family, pretty much. My grandma and grandpa, Drake, they were professional shooters for bear archery. They shot recurve field, open field competitions and stuff like that. I used to shoot a lot of competitions. Thinking about getting back into it, but as far as hunting and stuff, I like to stick with no sights. I think it's more fun. Better success that way. When you guys draw these bows back, don't listen to anybody talking about finger pinch because it makes no sense. All they're doing is whining because they've shot fingers a few times and their fingers are sore now. Look at my fingers. You see that one? Look at that. Look how bulgy it is on the side there from the string. It goes away. It just, you get used to it. I don't feel any pain anymore, but you just get used to it, like anything else. And when you draw these back, you can relax your fingers on a compound bow that has a good string angle to it. What you want to do is shape your fingers to the way the string is, and I'm going to show you. Hit that angle with your fingers. Don't try to keep your fingers perfectly straight. Just relax them and put a little bit of pressure on there. Mostly holding with these two, but this one still has pressure on it. That's just what I do. I don't keep them straight trying to really tighten up that string. So here, if you can kind of see. And I come up there, I hook my first finger on my cheekbone you can hit the middle finger in the corner of your mouth but I hit my cheekbone I hook my cheekbone my nose is on the cock feather if you can see that I get a steady hold there just let her go it can be done because I do it Tim Wells does it the Fitzgeralds do it and it's fun okay there were my two in the heart there that one's showing a little bit weak this bear shaft entered pretty straight so I would say that's good Doesn't have a broad head. 
No, it doesn't, does it? Uh uh. We those blood heads are, are up there somewhere. Plastic. Yay! Yes! We got it. There's two bare shafts. Once again, they're in there nice. Blew the vein off of that arrow. That wraps it up. I just wanted to take the time to do a little quick video of my setup in the house. You know, I'm watching Axel this morning. I'm going to go deer hunting this afternoon. So I had a little bit of time and I'm going to be getting a new bow this, this month maybe. It might come in. I'm going to be getting the Matthews Travers. I just like the way it feels. I don't care about brands or whatever, but I like the way the Matthews bows feel. They shoot nice and all that stuff, okay? I don't have to get into a big bow review, but I'm just going to show you my setups. I like the way they shoot. When I get this bow, I'm going to pull it out of the box, do everything on camera. We're going to go through the whole setup. We're going to go out in the yard and we'll bear shaft tune, shoot fletched arrows, broadheads, and I'll just show you what it takes to set up a bow and tune it. And I might even change up arrows. I don't know. I might go to Carbon Express and try those and get a little more weight forward with some brass inserts. Just do some experimenting. Or I might end up with these. I change my stuff up so much that, I mean, it would probably drive you nuts. I know it drives my wife's nuts because I'm in and out of this door so many times with knocking pliers, Allen wrenches, different arrows, adding weights, taking weights out. You know, I just like doing that because it's fun. If you guys have questions, just feel free to ask. Don't be scared to get out there and shoot fingers with a drop away rest. If you want to shoot three under, I've done it. I killed one of my biggest bucks on the ground at 30 yards doing it with that no cam. Draw back three under, I drop to two. I hit my first finger in the corner of my mouth so you get a little more distance because you're lowering your anchor. But if you want to do three under, that's fine. Just hit a perfect anchor, just like you would if you were shooting sights. Kisser button, peep sight, that's all a spot on anchor every time. You want a good anchor? Don't be scared. You got to tune your arrows to hit where you want or you're not going to hit anything at all. Don't think that you're just going to be totally instinctive, drawing back, shooting at the hip, knocking down everything. Every good shooter starts out referencing his arrow where his bow hand is and over time you end up not even worrying about it because your brain your muscle memory takes over and you know whatever you want to hit that's where your arrow is going it just happens like that so just get out there give it a try I've spent a lot of time doing it and I still have my bad days and sometimes I miss it just happens don't be scared Get out there and let her rip. You gotta, you gotta learn sometime.